Hi sisters, uh, we are now in book one of our covenant orientation program entitled Our Covenant in CFC Handmaids of the Lord. Sa atong community, maka-encounter ta o pulong uh, covenant. Kaya after the CLP as a condition for membership in CFC, we entered into the covenant of the couples for Christ, handmaids of the Lord. Maong gitawag ta nga usaka covenanted community. On the screen is our written covenant. No? Uh, ato lang ng permahan kung ready na kita. Uh, nakabasa na ba mo, Ani? You know, as we read the Bible, we find out that its two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament, are covenants. Mga kasabutan de ay ni sila. All Christians actually have a covenant with God by virtue of baptism. Sa pagbunyag pa lang nato, doon na natay kasabutan sa Diyos. Also, as baptized Christians, we have a covenant relationship with one another. We have a commitment of loyalty, unity, and service. But we need to understand more about our covenant. Uh, it is at the heart of where we are at right now, and we need to appreciate the concrete situation which allows us to live out our covenant. So what is a covenant? Sa binisaya, kasabutan. Uh, you can see in, in the screen that a covenant is a solemn agreement between parties through which they commit themselves to certain relationships, tasks, obligations, or ways of living. Na ay duha ka types of covenant relationships. The first type is between parties equal in power and position. For example, between Abraham and Abimelech. Uh, pareho sila nga leader sa ilang tribo, matas ang ilang position. Another example is found in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verses 1, 3 to 4. Uh, that is between David and Jonathan. Si David, mauni siya si Haring David, si King David, no? Kanya si Jonathan, mao ang anak ni King Saul. Managigala ni silang duha, no? Si David o si Jonathan. Si Jonathan, brother-in-law ni David, kay naminyo man si David sa usaka anak ni King Saul. Equal po ni sila in power and position, managhigala. So, ang most common nga ganang inunani nga na ay covenant no, is a um, marriage partnership. Ang marriage partners, no, ang mga minyo ba nag-asawa, equal gihapon ng buha. So, the second type of Covenant relationship is between parties unequal in power and position. In this case, it is unilaterally bestowed by the greater on the lesser. So, ang muhimo sa covenant mao ang mas taas, no? Mas taas ang position. Example, um, conqueror with his new uh, subjects. So, the conqueror provides military protection while exacting loyalty and tribute. Ang katong mas greater, mao siya ay muhatag og protection. Ang mga subjects, muhatag og taxes o loyalty po. But the best example between two unequal parties is between God and His people ang Diyos o ang iyang katawahan. Covenant agreements do not just bind persons to something outside themselves. Uh, pareho sa kanang, for example, business contract. 
Rather, the parties are bound in a personal way. What is established is a significant family-like relationship between the agreeing parties. Sama ni sa agreement between God and Abraham. It is family-like. Yeah, the mighty God is a father and Abraham his adopted son. Sa so Genesis chapter 31 verses 44 to 54, uh, there is an agreement between Laban and Jacob, father-in-law and son-in-law. No? Okay, can you see Jacob na minyo sa anak ni Laban? Actually, kanang several daughters ni Laban, kaya ilang agreement is for Jacob to marry only the daughters of Laban. Actually, when we talk about covenants, apilgid ang Diyos kay uh, parihaan nino kanang the agreement between Laban and Jacob. Niingon si Laban, remember that God is witness between you and me. No? Uh, Naagid ay ang Diyos kay siya maoy witness no? in the agreement. Even in marriage, God is the third party. Naagid di hapon siya. So, here are some important basic truths from the Old Testament. Sa Old Testament, um, covenant equals treaty or contract which established a relationship between two parties and bound them together. Uh, conditions and clauses were important, but more important was that which uh, these were meant to safeguard a lasting relationship. Naagi ka ng i-protect na relationship, a lasting relationship. Through the covenant, God and His people are joined together. In the Old Testament, the covenant was not a treaty between equals, no? But between a mighty person and a lesser person. It was between God Almighty and a people owing their existence to Him. And the covenant was issued by a stronger king at his initiative. The old covenant was initiated by God. So, what were the contents of the covenant? Ang kanang kasulatan no, sa covenant usually began with an introduction in which the mighty king identified himself as the one initiating the treaty and then proceeded to summarize the history of the relationship between the two parties with emphasis on what the mighty king had already done for the lesser party. So, makita nato sa Exodus 20 verse 2, uh, nga miingon, I am the Lord your God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. No, so, nga ni, ni identify ang Diyos sa iyahang kaugalingon. O niya, ni proceed siya to summarize the history of the relationship between the two parties. So, Deuteronomy 5 verse 6, no? This is the introduction na to the Ten Commandments. Na ay daghan nga ka ng kinahanglan, ka ng sundun sa mga katawahan, no? Honor, um, the Sabbath day, honor your father and your mother, thou shall not kill, thou shall not commit adultery, mga ingon ana, no? It is a list of mga do's and don'ts, no? For the people na gihatagan sa Diyos sa iyahang covenant. So we can see nga God freed the people first, then entered into a covenant. God did not give the commandments first, then freed the people if they obeyed. It is the other way around. God freed the people first. He brought them out of Egypt and then entered into a covenant with the people. 
our covenant with God is based on what He has done for us and only secondarily on what we do in response. So, uh, mauna na ang sa Ten Commandments, makita na to nga gilis ka kung unsa ang buhaton sa weaker party. No? It is listed what the weaker party needed to do. Obligations flow from what the other had already done. No? And all other commandments are part of our covenant. Ang kining covenant, it concluded with a list of blessings if we obey and curses if we disobey. Uh, makita ni nato sa Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. Blessings, no? Moabot na to, no? If we obey Him. Pero sa Deuteronomy 28 verse 15, Miingon, But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Breaking of God's commandments equals breaking our relationship with Him. And there are consequences. Being faithful equals blessings and promised land. Mauna na ay naa sa covenant. So, we now come to the New Testament teaching. God wants to make a covenant with us and enter into a personal relationship with us. In Luke 22 verse 20, miingon, In the same way, after the supper, He took His cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. In John uh, chapter 6 verse 56, meaning on, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. The new covenant is not merely a matter of obeying a set of laws but of entering into a living relationship with Jesus. And as with the Old Covenant, the New Covenant is not an agreement between equals. It is not done on our initiative. Rather, God acted first by sending Jesus. All that God asks of us flows from what God has already done for us. Sa 1 John um, chapter 4, verse 19, on, we love because He first loved us. So, una siya na nihatag o gugma ka na to. Unang kita, mga kaingon tayo, we love you too, Lord, because He first loved us. God's commands are taken in the light of His action in Jesus. Sa John chapter 13 verse 15 and 34, uh, mauni ni ay example ni Jesus for us. No? And it is a new commandment of love. May ingon nga, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Ang iyang example is an example of servant leadership, servanthood. And of course, there are blessings and curses because our response has eternal consequences. Kung sa may atong response, no? sa John uh, 13 verses 34 to 35, ang mauni ang commandment of the new covenant. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Mauna ang uh, commandment of the new covenant. But in the church today, there is a tendency to interpret this as a call to love all men and women. Of course, it is true that we must love everyone. 
But the New Testament distinguishes between love for those who are not Christians and the covenant love of Christian brethren. Uh, sa Galatians chapter 6 verse 10, may ingon diri nga, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we shall do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. So it is important to note the distinction and um, have a special love for our brethren, for our family in faith. Many Christian groups are unsuccessful because their models are secular in nature. They are unsuccessful because of democratization of personal relationships. Uh, today, the majority rules. The laws of God should rule, not the majority. Masayup mang good pud usahay ang majority. It is not a guarantee of correctness. Uh, they are unsuccessful because their aim is self-fulfillment. This promotes selfishness. They are unsuccessful because their priority is personal independence or individual freedom. God's laws are not important to them. They are unsuccessful because relationships proceed from feelings and not based on a covenant. In the secular world, there is no authority to oversee the relationships. There is no common life, no significant relationships within the body. The biblical model for relationships is the family. In the family, uh, there is membership in one body, interdependence, unity, common life. There is loving relationships, brotherhood, and sisterhood, and sharing. There is authority and order. But there are practical needs in a relationship. There is a need to express commitment and love to a specific concrete group of people. There is a need for such group of people to learn a specific set of relating and living out their commitments. So what is the nature of our commitment? We are to love and serve God. We are to be God's own servant people. We are also to love and serve one another. We no longer are our own masters. We are to lay down our lives for one another. Practically, we should be willing to meet our brethren's needs with our personal resources. We are to live our lives in true righteousness and holiness. We are to be a people that the Lord can use as a body to have unity, order, peace, and support for our common life. And we are to be light and live in to the world. So there are practical considerations. When people agree to put their lives in common, the following are necessary. A clearly spelled out commitment or set of commitments. Thus, we have our written covenant, an authority to govern the body and oversee the set of relationships. This consists of our pastoral structure of household and unit and chapter leaders, our overall governing and pastoral authorities, the CFC Council and the Board of Elders. It is necessary to take a responsibility for one another and for our common life. This is not just the responsibility of the leaders but of every member. Responsibility includes correction, intercession, financial help, etc. And we need to have a visible common life. For example, our various meetings and events like our icons, our coming Marian conference, etc. In conclusion, 
The Old and New Testaments are God's old and new efforts to establish a relationship with His people. CFC is a vehicle, an opportunity by which we can respond fully to God. Thank you and may God be praised.